All right, guess what? We just wrote some awesome code here. This is pretty much done, right? We probably want to have a couple more getter functions at the bottom, but our code is set up in an intelligent way. And I think it's time for us to start writing some tests so that we can make sure this actually does everything that we want it to do. So now that we're a little bit more intelligent with how we write our tests, let's come up with the game plan to write our tests. So first we're gonna write some deploy scripts, and then we're going to write our tests such that it'll work on a local chain, a forked testnet, and a forked mainnet. And we wanna do all this integrated with our deployment scripts. So let's go ahead and get cracking. So to get started writing our deploy script, let's call up to scripts, create a new file, deploy raffle.s.sol, like this. And in here, you already know the drill, SPDX, license identifier MIT, thanks chat. Thanks GitHub Copilot, contract, deploy, raffle, is script, like this. We're gonna import script from forge std slash script.sol, like that. All right, cool, clear. Let's run a little sanity forge build in our terminal. Looks good, oh. Source file does not specify required compiler version. Consider adding a pragma. Oh, yeah, well, I should probably do that. Pragma solidity 0 0.8.18. Let's do this again. Wonderful. In here, what are we going to do? We're going to create a run function. Now, remember, if we briefly pull up our foundry fund me again, and we just look back at how we did our deploys here. Remember, we had this run function which is gonna return that fund me object at least, and also potentially the helper config. This way we can use that run function directly in our scripts. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna create a function run. This will be external, and this will return our raffle contract, which we should probably import. Import raffle from dot dot slash src slash raffle dot soul, like this. Function run, external, like that. Okay, cool. Now we gotta write our deploy script here. So let's look at our raffle. What does it take for input parameters? It takes an entrance fee, interval, VRF coordinator, gas lane, subscription ID, and callback gas limit. As we know, a lot of these are gonna depend on the chain that we're using. So because of that, we're gonna need to make a helper config that has all of this stored so that no matter what chain we deploy to, we're good to go. So before we even can finish this run function, we're gonna go ahead and create a new file called helperconfig.s.sol. Same thing, spdx, license identifier, pragma, solidity, 0 0.8.18. Contract, helper config is script. And if you need to refer back to the Foundry Fund Me, be, f feel free to do so. We're gonna import script from forge std script.sol. A lot of what I'm doing when I'm actually coding is gonna be copying and pasting stuff. Maybe my own past examples, maybe from ChatGPT or whatever AI that you're using. In here, we're gonna create our struct network config. And this is gonna have a whole bunch of stuff in here. And we can figure out what we want based off of this constructor. And in fact, I'm even just gonna copy my constructor and paste it in here. All right, the entrance fee. All right, cool. Entrance fee will be different chain to chain. Interval, yep, cool. Coordinator, cool. Gas lane, yep. Sub ID, yep. Callback, gas limit, yep. We're gonna need a couple other things in here in a little bit, but th these are gonna be the main pieces that we need. So let's first pretend like we're gonna deploy this to Sepolia, right? Because at the end of this, we are gonna deploy this to Sepolia. At least I am. You don't have to if you don't wanna wait for all the transactions to go through. So for Sepolia stuff, we're gonna need all of this stuff in here, right? So let's go ahead, we'll do function get Sepolia eth config. This will be a public view and it'll return a network config memory object. Let me zoom out, I'm definitely too zoomed in here. Zoom out twice. This is too small, feel free to zoom in on your homes there. And we're gonna say, we're gonna return this network config object, little parenthesis bracket here, so we can define exactly what we want. So first we're gonna need an entrance fee. So we're gonna say entrance fee. Let's have it be 0.01 ether. 
let's have our interval be 30 seconds. So we can just do a 30 here. We can have our VRF coordinator be the actual address of the VRF coordinator on Sepolia. So we'll go back over to the documentation, supported networks, Ethereum, we'll scroll down to Sepolia. Oops, excuse me, this is, we need to be on VRF. Excuse me, we'll go down to, we'll go down to supported networks. We'll scroll down, we see ETH mainnet, Sepolia testnet. Okay, cool, VRF coordinator. I'm gonna copy this address, paste it in here. What's next? Gas lane. This is also in here. It's called the key hash. So we're going to copy that. Great. We need the subscription ID, which for right now we're going to set to zero. But we want to update this with our sub ID. And we'll learn how to do this very soon. And then, of course, we're going to need our callback gas limit, which for this we're just going to say 500,000, which this is five. 100,000 gas, which should be more than plenty. Cool. That's right, great. So we have at least the Sepolia ETH config. We're also gonna need the Anvil config, right? <clears throat> because this is just for the test net, we also need for our local net. So we're gonna say, same as last time, function get or create Anvil ETH config. This will be a public, same thing, returns network config memory. And this one's gonna be a little bit more involved, right? Same as FundMe, we want to create a whole bunch of mocks for the contracts that we're gonna be working with here. So first, we're gonna say if, and then actually let me scroll up here, go at our constructor, same as last time, right? And we're gonna say, have some conditionals, we're gonna say if block.chainID equals 11155111, which is the chain ID of Sepolia. Then we're going to set some active config. So let's create a network config, public active network config. Active network config is going to equal get Sepolia ETH config. And then we're going to say else active network config is going to equal to get or create Anvil ETH config. Oops, this should be double equals. All right, cool. Great. So now that we have this active ETH config down in our get or create, we can just say if active network config dot VRF core denator does not equal the zero address, we can assume that it's been populated and we can just return the active network config so we don't create any additional mocks 